Hi everyone, in this tutorial I want to show you a workflow that I use a lot of times. We have reached a significant amount of tutorials and projects and I want to show you why I explore that many random topics and why it is helpful to download the projects. In this tutorial we will build a complex scene by combining the knowledge we got from two different tutorials. I'm going to show how to do it step by step and you will see you can quickly create a complex VFX in Houdini by using previous projects. One of the things I most love about Houdini is the reuse of complex systems that we have built in previous projects. I hope you enjoy this new tutorial and this workflow and I hope it will help you in future works. Let's start by looking at the tutorials list, okay? On uh, my website you can see all the tutorials that we have. And you know on Patreon you get access to every single project from each tutorial, right? In case you don't want to see it uh, all over from the start, you just, you've watched it and now you just want to pick up the notes, okay? <laughs> so we want to create a portal right a portal with smoke with a vortex smoke and then an animation a character falling down with a, a sequence of uh, animations right so for that for the character we are going to use this one this tutorial animation with the kini effects the new nodes from udini they are not new now but <laughs> uh, the nodes for rigging in udini and for that vortex, we are going to look at the custom velocity on Pyro, okay? On the Pyro part two, okay? So that that's, uh, those are the two tutorials that we are going to use on this, on this project. And you will see if you got the project files, it's really fast to do what you want. So we come to the Patreon, okay? If you have the tier to get access to the project files, we know that we want the Pyro effects. Okay, so let's press enter. And here you can see the project file for part three. Oops, you got the tutorial. And then here we got to part one and part two project files. So let's click here and download will start and we will need that project. And the other one, let me uh, remember the name. It's animation with Guinea effects. So let's pick up that one just to see how we built the the notes, right? Guinea FX. Because you can do a lot of things on, in Udini and it's normal that you don't remember. So click here and you will download the WinRAR with everything, okay, for this project, for this tutorial. So here are the, the project files and I have these here. So this is the custom velocity. Let's open that and let's go to character animation tutorial and let's pick that one too. Okay. While Udini is opening, let's go to Mixamo and you can download uh, animations and characters for free here on Mixamo. So for the character, I have this one. Okay. I don't know the name of it. Let me check how it is called. It one it is one of the most popular. So let's see where is it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There are a bunch of them now. <laughs> so here it is. Gun fall. <laughs> so we are going to use this demon. Uh, so pick here. Select uh, the character. Okay. Then go to animations, and we want uh, the character to fall down to the floor. So you you have a falling animation, a bunch of them. Okay, you can see falling to roll. But we need a, a bigger uh, falling. You have a falling idol. Okay, and let's go uh, look for a landing. No, I hard this one, hard landing. But this one doesn't have the falling and uh, this one has, okay? So this is the one that we are going to pick. So you get the, your animation and press download. Okay, then download with default settings and it is preparing the download. Let's wait a bit. 
And in case you want another animations to link, like an idol. So after the falling, uh, the character will go to a different animation. And be careful with this one. It is important. You can see after the falling, he stands like that. So it is important you have different idols, as you can see. And try to match that one. I think it's this one. Okay. As you can see, it's pretty close. Of course, we are going to use the blend, the motion blend, as we have seen on that animation tutorial. But I want a different idol too. I want this one. As you can see, the start is really similar. Let's press press pause. It's really similar. Okay, and it is looking. So let's press download on that one. And let's pick the other one just in case. We might need them. Okay. So after you download, you go back to your project. And as you can see, I already opened the other one. So this is the custom velocity for our pyro. We are going to use this uh, custom velocity node. So let's press Control C or Command C to copy and go to our project and paste it. Now we have our Custom, as you remember, if you have seen that project, we got our box, okay, and we convert it to a volume with the vel, okay, with velocity. Then we do some math, okay, here inside of here to have that vertex. Remember, let me clean all the keyframes. So, Control Shift click. Oops, that one is good because it is the noise. And as you can see, let me turn off all the forces. So here we got that uh, noise. Here we got the attraction. Let me increase even further. You can see the vectors are now pointing to the to the origin. It is the origin because we get this one, the center. We can convert this to a custom uh, parameter. So let's change this to load and go with uh, attractor point point something like that and link this here okay so now outside we got that attractor point oops i tried not to do this as i did with spaces okay and on the label let's use the same so let's go back now we see a tractor point and if i move these like for 10 you can see the attraction now is over there. This will come in handy because we are going to move the attraction point. And here we got the vortex, right? And it is looking again to the attractor point. Okay, it is vortexing uh, around the vortex point, the attractor point. Okay, pretty cool. And I've noticed when I created this, I left the noise type to alligator. This is kind of bad because if you've seen other tutorials, the, oops, let's leave it like it was, uh, two. Um, you know, alligator, the noise types, okay, they, they, they are different from, some noises are from zero to one, other noises are from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. You can see that on the documentation, not going to go, there but as you can see now with just the turbulence all the vectors are pointing like in diagonal right so let's change that to original purlin or purlin noise and let's see what is going on why am i not seeing anything okay simplex noise works but this one, okay, it is back. Don't know why. <laughs> so now you can see that we don't have that diagonal. It's more of a random noise, okay? A noise here. And we can increase that and even have better resolution. So now you can combine, as you know, on these. Now you have a noise and a turbulence and you have the attraction, okay? Pretty cool. So let's go back and let's paste paste a uh, geonode 
and let's call it character. And let's, uh, as we did on the other project, now we are going to import the character. Okay, don't mind the errors because it's not loading. And remember, you can with KineFX, you can sequence multiple. Uh, multiple animations right that we have download on mixamo because we are using a mixamo character this will be easy and as you can see we have the fbx character import okay and a bone deform pretty simple and then the normal one is that we import the animation uh, fbx animation because we are going to have the falling that will be here we have the idle looking and the idle, the normal idle. So the system is like this. You import an animation, extract locomotion and motion clip. You do that to both of animations and then convert it to motion clip sequence. So it will merge both. When this one stops, it starts the other one. And then motion clip evaluate to translate or transform into an animation. So let's do that really quickly. So let's go to our project and let's FPX character import. And of course, I forgot to bring up the, <laughs> the mix ammo. So let's go to the downloads that I did and I already did that on the project. So here we got the mix ammo. I'm going to copy that into the tutorials and paste inside here the project file of our tutorial okay now we got this max demo where i have the falling idle we are going, not going to use that now but the hard landing the idle and the idle look okay those are the animations that we have download on mix demo okay so fpx character import let's go fpx file let's go to job mix demo and hard falling Okay, you can see that we got our character here. Don't mind that uh, X-ray uh, vision. We are going to work in that. And as we have seen, we need a bone deform. So let's link everything in here. Now we have our animation. If I press play, you can see our animation. So this is the first one. Now we want to sequence the other ones. So let's go to the project. And remember, we import just the animation. We just need the rigging, extract, motion clip, motion clip sequence, and motion evaluate. So let's do that. So here, let's go FPX animation, import. Let's go pick the idle. So here we want the idle look. And let's go do the same for everything. So extract locomotion, like this here. And let's pick the locomotion uh, joint. In our case, is the gun hall. And as you can see, let me turn off this one. So I hope you can see that little dot here, that red dot that we are extracting the locomotion. Then we are going to do a motion clip, right? Motion clip. Link to a motion clip sequence. Sequence, where is it? Motion clip sequence. And then evaluate. And let's do the same for this uh, idle. Let's go with idle looking. Let's select these two, export, uh, alt drag to copy, not export, sorry. So now we do the same as you can see the motion clip checks every single frame. And here you can see that red dot, it is on the spot. And now we can motion clip sequence and we have all of them, but you can see that we got a, a little problem here. So first, things first let's go to motion clip sequence locomotion use existing one to use that red dot that we exported here okay and now let's use a transform just to move this one 
uh, to the same space as the blue one. So just use a transform here and let's go by really quickly and using our eye to move this one closer. So it's something like that. Maybe maybe one, minus 1.3. That is too much. 275. Okay, that is super close. Uh, it's close enough because now with the motion clip sequence, you can blend. So let's blend 10 frames. Okay. And uh, motion clip evaluate. You will see if everything goes all right. We have that green skeleton. It is the first. Oops, let's go slowly. It's falling and then it's moving to the next one. Pretty cool. Now, if you want the other one, let's go really fast. Press L. And let's do the other one so we can just import this and you have to do it again so let's go extract okay i'm just alt dragging because the settings will be the same because we are using the same model so it is easier on the animation let's go and pick just the idle okay so this one remember it is just the normal idle okay something like that he's just breathing and where is it and after the motion clip as you remember from the other tutorial you can cycle right oops i don't know how to write cycle cycle motion clip cycle and you can tell here okay let's cycle uh, two times okay and again motion clip sequence and motion evaluate so let's see how it goes and now it is breathing and it's going to cycle two times on this idle okay after we are done with the motion clip evaluate we just need to link this here and this will work now you can see that our character is animating throughout all the all those clips okay so now let's fix that uh, we got our animation now let's fix that x-ray vision if you use the mantra you will see the materials on the renders but i'm going to use redshift to, so i don't really enjoy and i don't really enjoy working with that wireframe so let's put an attribute delete and let's delete everything so we just keep the normals the uvs and here i think it is what job material that's okay for now so if you import the material override you will see that we lo lose that thing okay so maybe yeah that's okay we have a more clean uh, model so we can play with it Okay, pretty cool. And now I can see we will use a, a time warp because the animation is really fast and it is starting on frame one. But for now, let's use like that. And as you can see, we are working in a normal uh, unified scale by one by one. And I want this a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's come here and put a transform. And let's increase. 10 times okay, to have a bigger character. Cool. And uh, let's name the null to be out character. Keep everything organized. Let's press save. And now let's do our vortex, our pyro, right? So let's put a geo and let's call portal emitter. And this will be really fast and really simple. So let's go with sphere. And let's increase these like 10 times. That is cool. And let's put a transform. Let's flatten that out. So let's go by 0 0.05, something like that. 
and let's move it something. We want the camera to be something like this. So we want the, part, the portal to be here on the top. So let's bring that maybe to 50. Should work. And let's put a null. And let's go out vertex base geo. Okay, simple. And now, as you can see, <laughs> we want to make the, the character to fall in the, in the middle of that vertex, right? So let's do that really quickly here. Let's push this. Let's put a transform. So let's call it scale and let's call it animate. And here, so we want when it falls down here, on the first frame that it touches the ground, let's go translate to zero. And here, let's move this really half. So let's go, we put the sphere on 50. So let's make sure that everything is all right. And let's see how it goes. And pretty cool. Let's see. Okay, cool. And I can see that our animation is not really on the middle. And we want this to be in the middle. So let's go and add just put this more on the spot that we want. Let's move something like that. That's too far, something like that. Okay, cool. And let's see how everything looks. Okay, cool. And we are going to use a time warp to slow down a little bit that animation. And let's go use speed. I'm starting to use more speed than uh, working by frame. Don't know why, but I kind of like it that. So uh, we are going to come back to this time warp after we finish the portal, the pyro. So we got everything here on the portal. We got the sphere, the transforms. It is on the place with the size that we want. And now just go to pyro really quickly and let's use flames now. We are always using below is smoke. Let's try something different. Okay, so let's go up. Let's organize the viewport. So we got our auto dop. Okay, and we got our pyro import. So here we got those uh, nodes that we didn't create it for us. Let's go here and fix this a little bit. So as you can see, uh, it is surf uh, surface scattering and we have a particle separation and a particle scale. Let's change this to a volume scatter. So we are em emitting inside, but our sphere is so, let's go. It's so thin that it doesn't matter really. But let's see, volume scatter and decrease this, this one. So as you can see, we have much more uh, points, right? We have much more points and we have points inside of the, that sphere. If we use surface scattering, like the name suggests, we are just scattering on the surface. But I want this to be really thin, a uh, thick uh, fire. So let's change that to a volume scatter, 0 0.1 and 1. Everything else is OK. The add noise, oops, I like to change this a bit. So you can see really the add noise. So let's use the rasterize to see what we are doing. On the add noise, let's leave the minimum and the maximum. Let's go and change this to 2. So we have more noise. Uh, maybe change the pulse duration. Okay, pretty cool. Let's go here and let's go back up one level and we are on the viewport and I just unlink the portal emitter. Now, oops, on the top network, we have the normal settings. Okay. And let's fix that a big size because we are not going to put these going up the flames, right? We are going to use vortex. So let's fix this. Let's go 50. 
by 25 by 50, zero. We know that our sphere is on. Let me see, where is it? We, we got this translate. So let's copy this, copy parameter, keep everything procedural, and center, let's paste relative values. Okay, so now we know that our pyro is on the start of our sphere. We can even fix this a little bit, so that is lower. Resize container, let's do the same as we do. Clamp to maximum and check. Padding is okay for now, I think. And everything is all right. Let's go and turn that down. If you get higher numbers here, it's normal because we are going to work with bigger scales, but let's decrease this to two and minus one. We want the flames to fall a little bit. If we leave it at one, it goes higher. I covered this on the intro to pyro effects tutorial, so let's keep everything all right. Combustion, everything is fine. We don't want the flame height to be that high and we want the smoke amount to be really big. Uh, let's go with eight. On the shape, let's decrease this a bit. It is way too much. Just using the normal values. Okay, more dissipation maybe. Or let's leave at 10%. So everything is fine for now. And let's import that uh, custom velocity, right? We want this custom velocity to affect and move our pyro. So let's go to, let's turn on and let's put our custom velocity on the place that we want. So let's go first here. Let's move the box to the side, uh, the place we want. So on the center, base relative to be in the middle. Okay. On the volume. Okay. On the volume, let's change this uh, to by size. And maybe that's okay for now. And let's change it a bit. Let's go 60 by 30 by 60. Okay, I think that's cool for now. Uh, we are creating the volume, right? It is processing because we have a big resolution. Let me cancel. Uh, let's change here. Let's go to 0 0.4. Now let's check the volume trails. Okay, so you can see that we have a huge resolution. So let's go to one, be faster. Okay, pretty cool. And let me turn off that. Okay. So right now, the first thing that we want to change is move the attractor point to the same place that we are using, the center of, the center of our uh, sphere. And if you don't see, just come here and increase that vertex and you can see what we want. So now let's go maybe decrease this a bit and increase the scale. Maybe that is low. And let's go to copy parameter, base relative and base relative. And here let's go something really small. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, maybe just increase this a bit. So you can see we have a vortex. Okay, now we are just adding a little bit of turbulence. Pretty cool. Okay, now that we have what we, uh, the base that we want, we can come here to the volume and increase the resolution a bit. Pretty cool. And now we are exporting this to a null. And let's come here and import that. So let's put a volume source. Let's wire this to the merge. And we are importing a source smoke, a sub. Let's pick that one. So custom velocity, out custom velocity. And we are importing a vector named bell to bell. Okay, so now that velocity is being imported to our pyro simulation. So let's see how it goes. Let's go to 0 0.6. Let's turn off this one. And one thing that I like to do is on pyro import, I want to delete that one. 
don't really like to see that one. And put a visualization. Oops, how do you write visualization? Volume visualization. And pick this to density, as you can see. And in our case, if we want to see the temperature, because we are working with flames, you can come here and use a black body. Okay, so let's cache this a bit. I'm going to increase the ham so we can see a bit more frames. And let's check this out. Let's go click on 60 and wait until it process everything. Okay, let's see how the vertex is working. And we have our vertex. Pretty cool. And as you can see, it takes a little bit of time to start uh, vortexing and building up the smoke. So we want, that's why I told you about time warp, we want to delay a bit the animation, maybe until it is frame 60, maybe something like that. Okay, so let's go to character. Now let's turn off this one. Let's go to character. We are turning off so we can scroll without processing the animation. So here, let's go maybe to 20. Let's put the speed to zero, keyframe it. And maybe on 50. Let's go a little bit higher, 0 0.2. Let's see how it goes. Okay. And after a while, maybe on frame 90, we start increasing the speed. Okay, so we have those four frames. Let's see. Now it's back to normal speed. But while it is, uh, let me turn on, while it is passing through the portal, it is a little bit of slow motion. Okay, it is processing that, so let me come here and check this here. Okay, now it is faster. As you can see, it is passing, and I think I can see that, that we should boost the speed a little bit sooner. Or maybe that is cool, because we are going to have a lot of smoke here. Okay, cool. So now let's go back and let's make our character to collide with our smoke. So select the character node, go to collisions and go to deforming, click on deforming. It is going to create for us those little nodes, okay, that we love so much. And on out top network, press L. And as you can see, we have here the collision. Let's fix a bit this so Go to collisions, collision guide, and as you can see, this is the mesh that is going to collide with our uh, smoke. And as you can see, our character is a bit, uh, how do you say, thin? It's, a, it's too much thin to collide with the smoke, and we want to boost that up. So let's go to division size to 0 0.4. If you want to be really precise, you can lower that to a minimum that you can have overall, but we are going to increase. So let's go to 0 0.4. And here on the su offset surface, I'm going to boost a bit the collision. So maybe one to be really high. Okay. So now we have really uh, a cool mesh that we can collide. So let's turn off that. And here on the pyro, let's do one thing. Let's add a little bit of viscosity, 0 0.1, just a, a really tiny bit. And let's put this to 0 0.28, smoke amount, that is maybe cool. Gas full, advect full, and on flames, let's go a little bit higher. Okay, and something here is cool. Let me change this a bit, and let's boost the confinement so let's go with confinement, gas vortex confinement, okay, and link that to the velocity update. 
Okay, I think everything is fine now. Let's turn off that and in pyro import. And I'm going to cache until 120. So we'll be right back. Okay, let's see how it goes. We have, that is pretty cool. We have the character <laughs> colliding with the smoke. There is something odd that is a lot of turbulence and we don't really want that much. And I guess I can, I did something wrong on the volume visualization. And of course, <laughs> here is density and diffused field, it is the temperature. Okay, so we can see a little bit the temperature. Let me check this. Okay. Can even turn that a little bit. Okay. That will work for now. So let's fix that noise. That is too much noise. And let's go. Let's go to our custom velocity and let's see if that is the problem. We have too much noise here. So let's dial this down a bit. Okay, and maybe one and zero point forty five less turbulence. Okay, and here the vortex maybe it's way too strong. Okay, let's check if that will help our animation. And here, let's go to pyro. Let's see if we can boost. Let's turn off jet vect again. Let's increase the flames, the smoke. It is creating too much. As release, it's okay. Now you can see this is just uh, trying to find the magic numbers to increase. If you don't know what each parameter does, you can just mouse over and Udini will show you a tip. And of course, you have always the documentation. And I think it is the gas release that is boosting up that, that I don't really want. Let's dial down to six and sharpening. Let's go to 0 0.2 here two. Let's boost this up the shredding or the shredding is Something like that. Now it's just magic numbers until you are direct what you want. And I can see maybe that is too much on the size, on the beginner of that size. And maybe the noise is way too low. So let's go to something. Okay, something like that. Let's go up and let's see how it goes. Go again to maybe 150 now, and let's see, let it cache a bit. Okay, let's see how it looks, and let's press play. And let me try and fix the light first, <laughs> sorry, because we want to see the lower side, something like that. Okay, let's press space. And let's go back to perspective. Okay, cool. Let's move this out. Okay. So let's see how it looks. Okay, cool. That is pretty cool. Because the resolution is really bad because we are uh, recording the tutorial. But to art direct, it's always better to be in this resolution. Okay, so let's come here and see if we boost that a little bit. Okay. This is even better than what I did. <laughs> we have more of that. Uh, pushing. Pretty cool. Now let's see. 
Let's increase a bit the size. I was thinking that it was too low, but maybe we should boost that a bit. So here, uh, let's increase this like two. Okay, we are doubling that. Let's go to custom velocity. Let's vertex a bit more. Okay, let's kill the attraction for now. And maybe increase the, this to 0 0.5, go to one. Okay. And here, let's turn off the sharpening. Let's go to two and disturbance to five. And I think that is cool. There is causality a little bit more. Maybe here we need to increase a little bit size. Let's go to three. Now it's like I said, it's is up to you to fix and art direct these with these magic numbers. Okay, so I'm going to cache this a bit. Let me lower down a bit the resolution to 0 0.4. Okay, and let's put a file cache, our friend file cache. Let's link that. Let's call it cache smoke vortex. Let's delete the hip name. Okay, and I'm going to cache these. Let's go until frame 150 or 120, 180, sorry. Let this fix that. Okay, 180 and press save and save to disk. Be right back. Okay, let's see how it goes. Uh, I've cached everything linked to the volume, right? Let's see quickly. So we have the vortex. It's a little bit heavy, so I can quickly see that our vortex is expanding way too much and close to the ground. But that, as I said, it's just magic numbers to our directory or simulation. And I did a flip book just to see how it looks. Let's see. Cool, nice vortex on the beginning. And our character is pushing the smoke as we want. Very cool. At the end, you can kill a bit the the smoke or stop emitting at 150 or in the render, change a bit that uh, the render settings. So we can see that really quickly. Let's go and see how we can render this smoke in Redshift. Uh, so let's delete the distant light. Let's uh, change the UI to Doxia Render. Okay, let's go, let's save. And uh, Redshift, let's put uh, these ROPs. As you know, what I do always, 8, 5, 12. Let's go do it for, for now. Brute Force, double Brute Force, 6, 10, 24, and System, because I have RTX. Let's go and turn that on. Okay, so here, let's go, let's put a camera first. <laughs> and let's go with camera. And let's change this to background, dark. Okay, where is it? Very cool, and uh, let's turn off that. Something like this. Let's see the overall, but I, I like the beginning. Okay, because I want to show you something, is that on the viewport, you see a lot of voxels, but you can smooth that a little bit on the render side. Okay, so now let's put a, a light. Let's go RES light. Let's look through that. On the light, we know that we want contribute to the smoke, increase the samples, and the size, let's go 20 by 20. Okay, and let's put one light here. 
for example. If you like, let's turn off that. Or even, where is it? This one. Okay, so you can see a bit better. Okay, let's put one light here. And uh, alt drag. And the second light. Let's put a backlight. Something like here. Okay. And let's increase this one to 40, maybe. Okay. And let's turn off visible because we don't want to see them on the render. Save and render view. Oh, lol, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to put the, the material. Okay, so let's go tab, volume. We are not going to care about the character because if you are doing an animation, you are not going to use this character, so I'm not going to check how to put the texts because that you don't use Mixamo animations characters to <laughs> use Mixamo animation, but you don't use Mixamo models on the final output, right? So on the pyro, let's link that RS volume, okay? And here, let's go on the channel, let's put temperature. Okay, let's color that with the black body. Let's save and let's turn off everything for now. Do on the emission and render view. Let's see how it goes. Okay, pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's add some color here, maybe. Let's go with black body. That is cool. And let's turn off everything. So here, let's go to one and let's increase this. Bit. And as you can see, remember, let me turn off that light. You can see a lot of voxels here, right? And you may think, oh, you, I don't have enough resolution for, to render this. But on the render side, it looks pretty smooth, right? Now let's increase, maybe here is way too big. Something like that. And you can even add the temperature. Okay, and let's check the lights, what they are doing. Let's go back to camera. Okay, that light is cool, but this one was way too strong. Let's go something like that. Okay, cool. And now on the volume, let's bring, why am I not seeing the temperature? Okay, now I, we have the temperature. Style this down a bit. Something like that. Let's increase this a bit. Maybe, okay. Let's boost that a bit. Something like that, and let's boost that. Maybe five and ten. I like to really, this can control the density of that uh, pyro. But as you can see, we got a pretty cool result, right? Let's see another frame. Something like that. Let's see how it looks. And again, as you can see on the viewport, you have a lot of voxels. You can see that definition here. Okay, that means that you don't have enough resolution and here it's pretty smooth. Of course, if you zoom in, you can see a little bit here. Okay, and of course some points that will get some voxels, but overall is more smooth on the render than it is on the viewport. So before increasing the resolution on the, your pyro, right? Try to check on the render before it goes, okay? So that's pretty much it. And I think we cover everything. What I want to explain on this quick tutorial is that we made a pretty complex animation, right? With a vortex, a pyro, a falling animation, and it was pretty simple and quick. Then it just art direct the, the position and the, vortex and the vortex forces and everything. But we, by using the Patreon project files, you can really quickly build up, for example, if you have a client 
asking for something really quickly you can boost these in 10 minutes and you have a, a, a study to show to your client or even test for your animation or game or something okay i hope you enjoyed this one and see you on the next one bye bye